Hi, Askin RC here, and in this video, we'll be reviewing the Coast Guard Boot Camp. Review, but more so reacting. It's, they're very similar in the sense of the Navy, right? They're kind of like brothers and sisters as far as I'm concerned, except they don't really go on deployments. They stay more local. Back in the day, like the Vietnam War, they actually go along with the Navy, and they would give a lot of, like, riverine coverage. But a lot of things have changed since then. So I'll be comparing a lot of things and going along, trying to explain what I can with this video. So without further ado, here we go. And already off the top of the bat, so these uniforms that they're wearing, very similar to what we wear now on Tupac's, and it's very like this for a while as well. It's been this for at least, at least the last 10 to 15 years they've been wearing these. They're like the Navy NWUs or the BDUs or with Marine Corps or Army wear, except they're just all blue. As far as the makeup of them, whether they're fire resistant, they use them for firefighting, or if they're electrical safe, I don't know. I'd have to double check that one. But it's very similar in the sense of it's, you know, it's a button up with pockets and whatever you want to call it sleeves and in the design you know it's it's very similar it's just color is the only difference oh like you can see they're wearing the original type 3 nws Type two, type two interviews. The uh, the blueberries, what we used to call them, but it's just the top they're wearing, the parka, and it's just, it just comes with a liner as well. But you can like take the liner out. But it's just uh, more so. It's a windbreaker. It's also good for the rain. Uh, but there is times where it was cold out. It'd be like forty degrees, but with the wind chill factor, it'd make it like twenty. But if I just wore that without the liner, that it does such a great job. So the type threes the green ones that we have now they issue these as well they also issue like a black parka liner as well uh but those are just so you can wear in different uniforms open your mouth man keep going don't oh, tell you stop this is coast guard boot camp so this video is about a year or so old but it's very interesting because we don't train with rifles like this in the Navy. So I'd be actually interested if they still do this and what the purpose is. No one. Before they get to serve in the United States Coast Guard, all recruits have to graduate from the Coast Guard's eight-week basic training program. I love the drill instructor's hats in this. Looks fantastic. We should adopt that into the Navy. Let's start a petition. It's not easy. There's a reason the program is designed the way it is. We have people from all walks of life that come here. It is a small portion of the youth of this nation that are at least attempting to raise their hand and do something bigger than themselves. Basic training happens here at United States Coast Guard Training Center, Cape May located at the southernmost point of New Jersey. But before they get to Cape May, all incoming recruits report to the USO lounge at the Philadelphia airport. So it's actually interesting is just, there's always like a USO lounge dedicated. Uh, I mean, there's USO lounges at most airports. And if you're in the military or retired, uh, you go there. It's nice. It's it's I wouldn't say as bougie as like some of those higher price airlines, but it's got everything. It's everything It's couches, chairs. Some of the food is free and stuff like that. And if you got like a six hour layover, just chill in there, take a nap, some free Wi-Fi, get a snack. Uh, watch some TV. Uh, it's, it's pretty cool. So military branches all around. It's it's nice. It's a real nice to have. And you had to be uh, either with an active duty person like they're dependent or active duty or retired. And uh, so in Illinois and Great Lakes, they had the USO there facilitates just the same way that this USO is facilitating as well, but specifically for the Coast Guard. It's where they spend their final moments before beginning their journeys as Coast Guardsmen. Why am I doing this? I don't know, it sounded like a good opportunity. My grandfather was in the Coast Guard. My mom's whole side of the family was in the Navy, but I didn't really feel like the Navy was my calling, and the Coast Guard felt right. <laughs> Should have joined the Navy. I don't have a ton of money, man. I don't come from money, so I didn't really, uh, couldn't really afford school. So this kind of seemed like my only option to do this without uh, accruing a, a large amount of debt. So I'm most. So I, that guy makes a great point. He talks about a lot of people who joined the military. He joined because he didn't come from a lot of money, and he wanted to uh, join so that he could make some money. And also, there's, I'm assuming there's some sort of post-9-11 GI Bill that they get in the—I'm pretty sure that's for all branches. 
So he's willing to serve to do that. And a lot of people say, no, when you serve, you should serve your country. Well, he's agreeing to serve his country when he joined the, the military branch. So it's just his reasoning isn't going to be so I could bleed red, white, and blue. That's There's nothing wrong with that. A lot of people talk about that. And I think that's fine. If you're saying, hey, I'm willing to, you know, possibly sacrifice myself for the greater good of the country, defending freedom. But, you know, if it means I get a college and sure, I'll do it. He's trying to improve himself and, and he's willing to make the sacrifice, just the same sacrifice as everyone else has gone in. So uh, a lot of people say, they, you know, why did you join? They wanted to join for college. Why did they serve? They're serving for the country to protect the Constitution of the United States. Everything they're raising the right hand for. It still doesn't change any of that. He just happens to, you know, why he joined. What he's serving still doesn't change. It's why he joined. Everyone joins for different reasons. I'm most nervous about, um, honestly, just the yelling. Something you just don't get used to as a day-to-day -day life as a civilian, so. Oh, yeah. I mean, for sure, right? That's the thing I've talked about a couple of times is you don't get yelled at a lot in the civilian world. There's not a lot of yelling that happens, which is a normal thing. There is, you know, no one goes around. I mean, it's only in boot camp as well, really. If you get yelled out outside of boot camp, that's also a military thing, too, if you really messed up. But, yeah, it's, as a civilian, you don't get yelled at. You mess up at your job. Your your manager isn't going to come down and yell at you. If they do, that's a hostile working for a civilian world. That's hostile. That's that's ridiculous. And if you're getting yelled at post boot camp, um, it's probably because you did something extremely bad. Like, you could have, like, endangered someone's life. That is what you did. Uh, so, I guess in the civilian world, if you did that as well, it, it would make sense. But the we being in the military you are going to deal with a lot more life or death situations not every day but if you're going to be handling a weapon or doing a dangerous evolution or if you're doing something that if you do it wrong could get someone hurt if you're working at walmart you're not going to get someone hurt just because you hung the wrong color shirt on the rack or you didn't greet properly when someone came through the door or you're not scanning items fast enough and if you're you're not endangering anyone's life doing that but if you're going to get yelled at for those simple things then that's that's toxic that's a that's a bad work environment um but yeah so military it you know just like any other work environment if you have bad bosses then it's going to be a bad environment uh which is something that i do my best to not uh indulge in i try to be in a working environment that is conducive to positive workers which doesn't mean i don't yell but it does mean that i encourage the proper thing and i don't yell at the little things there's no point at that but yeah i'm <laughs> going on a tangent but yeah exactly what he said it's going to be a lot of yelling, especially in boot camp, so get ready for that. This is the last non-stressful meeting you're going to have for the next several weeks. It's a learning experience. Their teaching methods are just a tad different. So, not to judge this man on how old he is, but for how old he looks, my bet is that he was in the Coast Guard when that was hardcore. And everyone can go back. You know, you can go back to saying, oh, back in the day it was way more hardcore when it did this or that. But that's the crazy part is like yeah like i said during vietnam i don't think i don't think he served during vietnam he doesn't look that old but the coast guard they would run along the navy and they would provide protection from like anyone attacking from land it's hardcore dudes uh, that were during that time uh and then world war ii as well but uh not so much anymore uh they i don't they don't really go out in those kind of missions they might do some sort of small missions but that's still the navy takes care of those kind of stuff get swick seals and even uh riverine navy than what you're used to they're going to walk into a world that's very different for them it's going to be very intense so that when they go out into the fleet stations and cutters that they're ready to help and ready to perform the incoming recruits enjoy what little downtime they have left get out of the hallway let's go before they line up and head to the bus that will drive them to cape may That is the last smile that guy will have for a long time. But it's nerve-wracking. Yeah, there's even when I was going through, people were just trying everything they could to like just go on the internet or like slide through their phones or something. Coast Guard, tough eight weeks ahead of you. What's the motto of the Coast Guard? Semper I can't hear you! Semper Paratus! All right. The motto of the Coast Guard is Semper Paratus. It means always ready. These new recruits have about two hours to get ready for what happens the second their bus ride is over. Oh yeah, just like a Navy. As soon as you get off, it starts right away. As soon as you get off that bus. 
Obviously, there's a shock and awe factor to it. Kind of everything goes haywire for a little bit. While we do need to instill that little bit of fear and sense of urgency in them that evening, the main goal is get them in the building and get them processed and get the paperwork where it needs to go and get them in the rack. Do it now. Aye, aye. aye Today, the Coast Guard has more than 40,000 men and women on active duty and over 30,000 more serving in reserve and auxiliary capacities. So that's actually really small when you think about it. It's 40,000, right? That's still a lot of people it, when you're just talking about how many people is that. But what's actually crazy is like you talk about the Navy, we're at like 300,000. Um, we get like 40,000 new recruits a year into boot camp alone. So they're at the time they're recording this video, which is about a year ago, it, you know, what their total capacity is, what we train every year to join into the Navy. Numbers are down now, but when I was going through as an RDC and uh, one of my jobs was to track uh, incoming recruits, we were near 40,000 a year. So just to show you, Coast Guard isn't a huge branch. And it all begins here. On a cold week in November, we spent four days at Training Center Cape May, allowing us to observe different companies at various stages of the eight-week boot camp. Boot camp itself, it, it, it is whatever you make it. You do what you're told, yes sir, no sir, aye aye sir, and it's as simple as that. First, the new recruits are issued uniforms. Next in line. Come on this way. And after a medical exam and standard vaccinations, the male recruits get a free haircut. Yeah, they say free haircut, but you can notice here, this is like their P days for the Navy, the processing days. They have to go get their medical, their dental, and they're doing their basic fitness test here, and their haircut. <laughs> yeah, free haircut. As they can in one minute. Finally, there's a one and a half mile run. Male recruits have 14 minutes to finish the run. Female recruits have 17 minutes. Not every recruit passes on their first try but they do get another chance. You have five minutes to finish this test. Most of you should finish in less than three minutes. All Coast Guard recruits have to pass a three-part swimming test. Go ahead, step to the edge. First, jumping into the pool from a six-foot platform. Step off. Then, a 100-meter swim. And last, they have to tread water for five minutes. Pretty similar to the Navy. don't have to be expert swimmers. Remedial swimmers are allowed to wear flotation devices. They get flotation devices? That's ridiculous. Exertion, the recruits have undoubtedly worked up an appetite, which means it's time for lunch. Or as it's known at Cape May, chow. But chow isn't a time for relaxation or chatting with your fellow recruits. What is it? In fact, it's the complete opposite. So that's one thing. So some of the things also shared between the Coast Guard and the Navy, which believe it or not, actually the Navy and the Marine Corps share a lot more similarities because they're technically, they, we joke about this, but the Marine Corps is a department of the Navy and the Navy is the you know department of the Navy. It's its own thing. But actually uh, the Navy follows a long suit with the Marine Corps a whole lot more. Even though we call things differently, the, a lot of traditions are similar. We're brothers and sisters in that sense. But the Coast Guard is very similar to the Navy because it was born from the Navy. Um, and they, so one of the things here is he, there's a petty officer. That's what we call anyone uh, E4 to E6 in the Navy is a petty officer. But they tell him to say sir and ma'am, even though they're petty officer, which is something that we do not share. We only call sir and ma'am to those who are commissioned officers. Don't say that if they're non-commissioned officers, such as, you know, enlisted, if you will. So I just thought that was kind of interesting. But yeah, chow. Everyone calls it chow in the military. Who doesn't call it chow? And yeah, you, I don't know what branch allows you to talk in boot camp while eating or even talk without giving permission to talk in really in general. I oh, 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 Let's go. Move your feet. How about you move a little faster, man? No, no. Get out. That's not where you sit. That's not where you sit. You have someone right there telling you where to go. This should be one of the most relaxing times they have, you would think, uh, but that is when all eyes are on them. You're not special, and you didn't shave last night like we told you. A razor never touched your face. As soon as you get back from medical, 
I am taking you in there and ensuring that you shave. It must be real cold out, too, if you think about it, because they're wearing their sweats, and his parka they were talking off has the liner inside of it, so it must be freezing in New Jersey in November. I don't know. I've never really been around there, and I'm not really a fan. Uh, but uh, I think it's interesting because uh, we were – there was the thing is I would let my recruits so those 12 minutes they're allowed to eat a meal. Uh, we, I didn't mess with them. And it was one of those, you get your time, I get my time. I eat while they, obviously, their boot camp's different and how they do things, how they do things. But that was the thing is like, one thing that would freak me out is if I started yelling, one of them like jumped and got scared, they would start choking. I'd have to do the Heimlich maneuver and that would be super annoying. And it'd also interrupt my lunch. But yeah, difference. You probably think that you get a little break from the company commanders, but when you go to your seats, the uh, company commanders are staring you down and they're asking you questions. Tell me about a class Brava fire. Who was Alex Haley? Tell me about Commodore Berta. Before they can eat, recruits are randomly stopped by company commanders and tested on required Coast Guard knowledge. Go away, Davis. <laughs> recruits who answer correctly are allowed to pass and eat their meals. That would be so annoying. Not the asking questions part. Uh, I know the Marine Corps for a while did the same thing. I don't know if they still do it. Uh, but that would be so annoying with the way she yelled. If that was the way they required them to answer every single time. I mean, unless it's to get motivation going. Oh, please don't yell in my face every time. I'm just saying she's talking. The the drill instructor or the company commander is talking to him normally. And it's screamed back. That's, uh, I mean... You know, that's their world. They're, I'm sure they're super used to it. That's just, you know, differences. <laughs> that would be so annoying. Carry on. Tell me about Douglas Monroe. It's not on the deck. Start writing. Aye, aye, buddy, I'm the Start writing. Start writing. Start writing. Those who fail to answer correctly are ordered to document their mistakes on a performance tracker which is collected and reviewed every day by their company commanders. It just goes to show you that there is no downtime in basic training. What the freak are you? It's a sense of urgency in everything we do. And the company out. That is a sharp looking, I am assuming, a dress blue uniform if it's not their service uniform. That man looks sharp. That's a good looking uniform. Way to go, Coast Guard. You guys look sharp. And it really all at the end of the day is there to assist the recruits and keep them sharp. She looks good too. This uniform looks great. This is the jacket. That we need to get that into the Navy. That looks sharp. I know the female uniform used to have that for the dress blues for E6 and Junior. And then I know khaki wear it as well, but that's like a dress blue, so it's a winter uniform, which it's winter here, so it could be. Looks good. It's a good looking uniform. They look sharp. You don't respond to carry on! And as boot camp goes on, it doesn't get any easier outside the galley. We're going outside to play some games because of some stuff that you did. If an individual recruit makes a mistake in boot camp, the entire company pays for it. So this is what I don't understand. I don't understand why we're in week 06. We still have gear drift in our damn squad base. We still can't push in the hooks. Gear drift is just means that things are not put away properly. So it's gear or items that are adrift or, you know, like a drift at sea that are out and just floating around. It means it means they're not put away. On our freaking racks, our laundry hooks. So this is the same racks we use in boot camp as well. And these cushions, so you won't see them. They're getting phased out. But this cushion here, and it's filled with a padding, and then there's a little air hole here. So when you sit it on the air, it escapes as the padding uh, gets compressed. They're wildly comfortable. They're actually surprisingly super, super comfortable for how thin they are. I mean, they're sitting on metal and how simple they are. I had the best night of sleep with this. Uh, uh, they're going through boot camp, and we had them in our sh my uh, my first ship I had for a while as well. Super comfortable. We're being lazy, Sierra, aren't we? <laughs> I'm glad you agree. Fire, fire, fire. Fire, fire, fire! When recruits hear their company commander say fire, 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 it often means they're about to get smoked. Fight some real estate. They get a whistle whenever they want them to do the next command. 
I mean, not to be like degrading, but, uh, but like I would want to whistle. Like, it would save me from screaming every single time I was trying to get everyone's attention. Although I would assume it get confusing with everyone else's whistles. The smoke sessions, if you will, are the physical exertion of energy to reinstill to them that what they were doing was not the correct thing. Stop anticipating my command. We'll just keep playing this game until you get louder. Straight out in front of you. I was walking through their squad bays. Their racks weren't made properly. That's ridiculous. That would make, I'm with her. If she's kicking around clothes, they're just on the deck. Are you kidding me? Look at how this, the racks are not uniform. I don't know if they teach that, but that's already getting me going. Yeah, I've, I'm, I never called it smoking him out or anything like that. We called it beating or ITE or, you know, making money, getting paid, drinking some orange juice, drinking some lemonade, whatever the color of the card was that we used. But yeah, no, I would lose my freaking mind, man. Just little minute attention to detail things that they that's not my new. They left stuff out. That's big. That's obvious. You should know as week 06 recruits, and so they got punished for it. <laughs> Getting smoked is, it's rough. It's hard to push through sometimes, but at the end of it, you're, you feel better because you, you made it through. You feel it's also, it's a workout, so I usually feel good after a workout as well. Of course, it's with the connotation of not trying to get in shape. It's you messed up, so you're doing this because you messed up, so it feels bad. But still, it's a workout. So, like, it makes you stronger. Get on the deck! Oh, oh did we lose count? Do we need to start over? Just do one good push-up. Usually in this week of training, we don't really discipline them as much, but we still have to uphold standards. And if they're not meeting those standards, then that's when we use these tools. Hey. Have we had enough? Yeah. We need to be just as tough as the Marines, the Army, the Air Force, and the Navy. So we have to also be held up. She hesitated before saying Navy, and that was a little offensive. <laughs> just kidding. But no, I agree with her. It's it's about not just physical toughness but mental toughness. Up to that standard as well. Minute two six probation on the quarter deck. Recruits who don't meet the standards of their company commanders are put on probation, which is signified by wearing a red belt. So I was going to ask about the red belt, but they just explained it there. You're on probation, which is wild. I've never heard of boot camp probation, but. I thought it was because they were going to be like sickle cell trait because that's what we do. We have them wear a red band to show if they're a sickle cell tr trait, which means that like it has to do with the, the type of blood you have, but you need to hydrate way, way, way more. Like you get dehydrated way easier. So it's a health thing. Uh, it was just a show like, hey, red belts, make sure you're hydrating all the time because we don't want you passing out because you're going to be doing a lot. So let's make sure you don't have like a health risk and pass out. Are you even using your brain? For sickle cell or G6PD? Press. You get put on probation um, when you're like falling behind the company, you have like an attitude problem. You wear a red belt that says, I need special attention, I need extra help, I need you to put the spotlight on me for a couple days. We just asthma, Simon Memorandum, we just sent it back in training. Um, but I guess this is like a special, like, instead of being sent back, you get sent here, unless they're also still in the division and also have a red belt. I can't imagine the extra like being I guess they call them company commanders, but being a drill instructor and having to be like also giving extra attention to someone like uh, on top of taking care of the entire, you know, com uh, company or division, if you will. Bam, bam, bam. Recruits in need of even more motivation enter a program known as RAMP, which stands for Recruit Attitude Motivational Program. Recruits in RAMP are required to wear a red vest. RAMP is a program we have in place for the recruits who don't seem to grasp the basic fundamentals of getting on board and aligning themselves with the Coast Guard core values. It gives them a chance to step back, yeah, but realize this the dude, picture, oh, He was over here, but the second from the left, he was bopping with it. He was feeling it. in which brought the recruits to the training center. It's how they operate as a team. See, a he's, he's in rhythm with it. He's feeling it. When we filmed this, these recruits were completely unsupervised and weren't being ordered by their company commanders. I like how he says that. It's supposed to be like they're doing it even though no one's watching. I assure you someone was around the corner and heard that going on kind of a thing. 
But if they really, really want to be in and they're having that kind of situation, they're going to do it because they want to be there. There's whatever the struggle is, even if they are acting out, they're still going to do it. Uh, I mean, if they really, really want to act out, they'd probably just run away, um, which I've seen happen before <laughs> in Navy boot camp. It never ends well. You can't get a job. You're considered UA, uh, so you'd have to work under the table. Like, and no one would hire you. They would just call the cops. Uh, you have to come back and get processed out. Uh, so not a good idea. Don't do that. There's, there's better ways to get out of the Navy, like retiring. Um, but yeah, I like how they made it seem like that. There was probably someone around the corner. I mean, I can't say that for sure, but come on. Get over here, Wentler. Get over here, Wentler. I don't understand why the hell everyone is counting but you. And then you cross that threshold when I can see you. Then you start doing the right thing. Get over here. Get over here. Get over here. Get over here. Chair sit. Chair sit. Feet shoulder width apart right now. Doing the right thing even when no one's looking. Say it, you. Louder. 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 You see that guy? Let's go back. He's, he's walking along on the uh, the side there. This guy right here, he's just like, oh, just, 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 just don't notice me. I'm just trying to get by, <laughs> which I've definitely, you know, seen. And then I remember in boot camp when I was seeing RDC yelling at someone. I was just like, oh, just don't notice me. I'm just trying to get to where I'm trying to get. Louder. He's even like quick stepping. Shut your mouth. So take it. Tell me exactly why. Why you think it's okay to do whatever the hell you want, and then someone sees you, and then oop, wake up. Time for me to start doing the right thing. Not good to go. Not good to go. Get upright. Fly away from me. Fly away from me. Is that a thing they say in the Coast Guard? Please comment below if that's a thing they say in the Coast Guard. I think it's awesome. I don't know. Maybe I should have said swim away from me when I was in RDC. That's awesome. We need a we need a thing. In addition to or like float on I don't physical know. and psychological challenges, the recruits actually spend the bulk of their time in the classroom. The Coast Guard basic training is heavy in academics. It's almost, we use the term sometimes that it's like drinking information through a fire hose. Recruits are trained to fight fires. This so-called wet room is used to simulate a fire on a Coast Guard cutter. So just like I said in the military for the Navy, you know, everyone on a ship's a firefighter. It makes sense for the Coast Guard to be the same way. You know, there's no like a fire department that's going to come out to you in the middle of the ocean if your ship's on fire. You got to fight that. So there's there's obviously those that are much more qualified at the very least. So you should be able to identify the fires, know how to properly attack each fire, whether Alpha, Bravo, Charlie, Delta, and then how to don all the proper gear and handle a fire hose, which they are powerful. So there is a specific way to handle them. So it makes sense. Uh, they're probably, I mean, the intro showed as well, firearms. So they're going to defend their own ship as well. Probably basic line handling. A realistic firefighting scenario. The recruits are trained in marksmanship and seamanship. We're gonna practice on our knots right now, so everybody get your lanterns out really quick. While filming in this class, come up through. One recruit gestured towards our camera. An officer spotted this, and while the recruit was privately reprimanded for the offense the entire company would have to pay the price. They make this sound so epic. If people want to act like actual crazy people all day at seamanship, I got a tool for that. Two zero zero seconds, back online with a full canteen, go. Fly, 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 little blue blurs, little blue blurs. Yeah, that was a little weird. I do like the fly part, but it, that was, uh. That's definitely got to be a uh, a cultural thing, because if I say like deck or I got to use the head or you know I was talking about the bulkhead and people are like ooh cringy you're talking like whatever saying like military terms or something like that I get it sure there's probably civilians that are just like okay whatever or if I say Roger that or I I they're gonna be like what that was weird why would you I'm not a not in the navy dude like yeah but I am so it's not to me so I'm sure in their situation it's not weird but I'm not in their situation. <laughs> Ears. Open. Feet shoulder width apart right now. Open. Get your canteens above your skulls. Open. Fingers interlaced, cap facing the overhead. Open. 
They get nicer water bottles you than we do. Absolutely no self discipline. Absolutely. That's just pushing through no the tile. Discipline. So you're just gonna remind yourselves. We have no self discipline. Go. We have no self discipline. We have no self discipline. We have no self discipline. Okay, go up biceps to your ear. Take your biceps to your ear. So this is actually pretty interesting because once again, it's a it's about utilizing physical fitness, which is just, technically just a, a workout. Every time we do stuff like this, it's a workout. But they're utilizing physical fitness for, you know, to remind them, hey, I messed up. So instead of like, you know, you're not physically attacking them. If all they're going to do is just gain more muscle or burn fat. But the water bottle, that would make it feel so, I mean, that water bottle can't weigh more than what? Like a couple pounds? But just holding it alone would probably make it feel like super heavy in a, a couple of minutes. So seven minutes is a long time. I mean, just try holding your arms up for seven minutes. Like blood goes away, they feel heavy, shoulders burn. And on top of that holding the water bottle, that's fair enough. That's a burn. Some of those dudes were sweating. Hey Lindsay, you taking a nice little break now that I turn my back? Come on, hey, let's add a few minutes for that there, Victor. Thank you, shipmate. Thank you. We have no self-discipline. We might think uh, a small water bottle with water in it isn't that heavy, but after 20 minutes, your shoulders kind of get a little heavy, and uh, once the sweat starts dripping in your eyes, you want to definitely put it down. But let me advise you, do not put it down because you will be holding the water bottle up for a longer period of time. I don't know how long they actually have 20 minutes. I mean, it, it's one of those things like holding a plank, it feels forever. Time just goes backwards, you know, like resets almost. Um, but yeah, uh, it, it, it burns. I mean, just try doing it with nothing in your hands. Just hold your hands above your head and then look in the mirror. Keep them straight. Keep your biceps zero uh, to your ears and do it. Just It's one of those things for sure. It sounds easy. Just do it though. And then if you felt like that was easy, you know, do it at the end of the day like they are and, um, you know, hold a five pound weight above your head. Taking a nice little break, Yelton. Okay, I take it back. It's been 14 minutes. It might be 20 minutes in total. Taking a nice little break, Yelton. We have no self discipline. It's immediate recognition for their mess ups. It's immediate recognition for something that they're doing wrong. I let them set their own pace, you know? I'm saying, all of you as a team are gonna keep it up. Oop, he didn't make it, let's all start over. So, it's really productive. You taking a nice little rest there with your hands, Van Brunt? Crazy how fingers interlaced on the front of the canteen was the rule and you broke it. Start over! So they keep saying start over, but there's probably some sort of rule like they have to do it for like, they can only do it for a certain amount of time. I used to do stuff like this all the time. I'm not saying for sure. I'm not in the Coast Guard. I've never been a company commander, but there's, I'm sure there's rules and limitations about how they can do things. So for example, th there might be so many push-ups. let's say um, like 50 push-ups. I can only make them do 50 push-ups at one time before moving on to the next exercise when it came to like ITE. So if it came, they're like 20 push-ups in and someone struggled to drop, I was like, oh, hoo ya, zero. And then they keep going and they didn't, like, maybe they did, maybe they didn't. But the whole idea is, no, not all of them did. So it was, it's, oh, come on, let's go. It's it's a mentality thing. So they think they're restarting, restarting. But the reality is I never made them go over the limit if it was 50 push-ups. They never did more than 50 push-ups. So you just keep resetting. And they're like, you know what? Let's just move on to the next exercise because you can't do it. In reality, you hit the max kind of a situation. Very challenging to get through it. You just almost laugh at your own pain because you're out of breath from screaming so loud, your shoulders are burning. It's a huge relief when the whistle blows and you get told to put your arms down. You want to make a deal, Victor? Ears. Open! Ears! Open! Drop the canteens.
Oh. Before graduation, recruits receive their orders for where they'll be stationed after they leave Cape May. Davis! Where'd you want to go, Davis? Let us know. They're going all the way across to Hawaii, oh. the exact opposite area. Will that, will that work for you, David? Is that good enough? Yes, David! That's, that's kind of messed up. They already knew what their orders were. So for the Navy, we go to a classroom, and then they're giving out their orders and then explain their orders at the end of boot camp. So I don't know if this is the end of boot camp. They said four days. So I don't know if they came back four times or if this is, you know, four days at the end, four days at the beginning, which if this is four days in the end, they're messing up this much, then uh, either standards are extremely high or they're doing extremely poorly, uh, this group, that is. So I would like to think more so that they're probably just – uh, jumping through boot camp here, but I, uh, that's messed up. They're like, where do you want to go? I want to go to Puerto Rico. We're going to Hawaii. Like <laughs> maybe it's part of the thing. It's just like, uh, there it's like a joke in a sense, uh, just to play along so they could hear where they're going. Like they were either, I could tell you, or you can ask me, where'd you want to go? I want to go to Puerto Rico. That's nice. What you're going to Hawaii. <laughs> either way, I think it's funny. You can't get Puerto Rico. You got Hawaii. That's pretty good, right? You want to go? Jane Ryder, Syracuse, Bunchup, anywhere, war! Recruits can request the region or district where they'd prefer to be stationed after graduation. Where'd you want to go? Bounce Grewo, Syracuse, Parker, on any Coast Guard cutter. Winner, Coast Guard cutter, Shackle, South Portland. But their requests aren't always granted. Where'd you want to go? I wonder how often they're actually granted, though, or if it's like one of those, like, um, it just happened like you know i want to go hawaii well guess what you got hawaii yay is it did you really get hawaii because you asked for it or just because that's where they were sending you with you know you roll the dice and it landed exactly what you predicted california you're going to alabama Woo! alabama on the friday of week eight the recruits are ready for graduation Oh, cool. So if this is the same group, then yeah, they just, they follow the same group and kind of like jumped around, uh, came back a couple of times, which is cool. And they do look sharp. Those uniforms look good. Still like the Navy uniforms, but those jackets look sharp. Friends and family gather for their first glimpse of the recruits since the beginning of boot camp. They feel joy and accomplishment. They know that they have done something that is physically and emotionally challenging. They feel satisfied that they've done that. Their parents are impressed because many times the parents see them for the first time as an adult, as an accomplished adult. We get a lot of credit for the change that goes on here in a lot of cases, we're just the catalyst. Recruits respond to the impetus themselves. They formulate the plan to change themselves as individuals and as a team, and they meet their company commander's standards. That's the you've actually done it. And that's, I think, what you see in the room today. What a great way to put that. You know, it's, you know, a car, you can give someone a hammer and a nail and some wood, but the house didn't build itself because of the hammer and nail. It built itself because the carpenter put it together. You know, they were the one that made the change, the effort, and they produced that product. So he's saying, you know, like the, if I'm understanding correctly, you know, Coast Guard was always here and they were always who they were. They made that change themselves. They put in the effort to change who they are and what they wanted to accomplish. And so it's their accomplishment kind of a thing, which is a great way to put it. You could say that across any boot camp, you know, just if you go to a boot camp and you're unchanged and you're not willing to change whatsoever to improve, to adapt, to overcome, you're going to get chewed up and spit out and it's not going to go well. But he, he nailed it. Um, you know, it's they're the ones that made the effort and that's what they are proud of. And you, you know, if you or a loved one uh, go through, proud as well, you know, 
but uh, that's going to wrap it up for this video. I would really actually like to do more interviews. I'm wrapping up an interview right now for a Submariner, and I would actually like to go through one of these videos with someone who is also in this branch, uh, who either went through recently or is active drill instructor for either, you know, Coast Guard, Marine Corps, uh, an active RDC would like to go along with me and break down one of the boot camp videos, uh, uh, Air Force, you know, um, that would be really cool to be able to sit together and give some more information out to the public. Uh, so hope you guys enjoyed this video. Don't forget to leave any comments, questions in the comments below and Coast Guard, thank you for your service and please do your best to answer and help out those who want to join. Hoo-yah, Navy.